unknown joy from heaven's reserve He stored up enough for every winter I'm served I'm seeing beyond my circumstance This joy that I have is my inheritance joy This is the joy of the Lord The joy The joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength The joy, oh the joy The joy of the Lord is my strength Oh, oh, oh He is my hope Yes, He is The joy, the joy The joy of the Lord is my strength Today we're looking at part two of the rapture in our series of uh, eternity. Where will you spend eternity? <clears throat> Today we're looking at the arrival of the bride. Last week we looked at uh, heaven's preparation for the bride. Heaven's preparation for the bride. Now that was a personal revelation for me that heaven actually is preparing for the arrival of the bride. Now in this country that we live in, if a king or a president or a prime minister comes to visit our country, our government prepares for the arrival of that person, yeah? They prepare, they put things in place, there is a tight security in place, they roll out the red carpet, and not only that, they, they sing both national anthem. But most importantly, our government doesn't just send just anyone to welcome the arrival of that king or that president or that prime minister. Our government sends either our governor general or the prime minister to greet that person. You know what happens when the, when the pride goes to meet Jesus? As we saw last week, the Bible says that for the Lord himself will come down from, come down from, question where are we meeting Jesus in the air so God himself comes down from heaven to meet the bride in the air hear this as I said last week throughout the whole Bible God normally uses either angels people or things to demonstrate his power or he would speak through them and those people they carry the name of Jesus they carry the name of God and they demonstrate his power in everywhere this is the only passage in scripture where it says the Lord himself is the word Adonai referring to God the master Lord he himself leaves his throne and he comes down to meet the bride that's how important you are when we arrive and meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That God will not send an angel to represent himself. He himself will greet you and say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. And God's people say, Part of heaven's preparation, as we looked at last week, it says with the loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, hear this, the rapture will take place whether people like it or not. It will happen. It is the same as hell. Some people don't believe in hell. It doesn't matter we believe it or not. Hell is real. The rapture will take place. Now, sometimes we need to be reminded that we are living in the end times. 
We literally are living in the end time and God in His foresight has given us warning and things to look for because His heart, He wants us to be prepared. He's told us in Matthew, in Luke, in 2 Timothy, by the way, people, last week I put up 1 Timothy chapter 3, it's supposed to be 2 Timothy chapter 3, where Paul wrote about the 19 evil behavior that you would witness in the last days. Question, are we seeing that? Certainly seeing that today, saints, we are living in the last days. One of the signs that indicates that Jesus is a lot sooner than we think. It's, a, uh, it's what Jesus himself said, and, it, and it, um, uh, it, it, it concerns me. Because Jesus said that the love of many will grow cold. The love there is the agape love of God that a Christian experience when they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, when they surrender their lives to Jesus, when they surrender their hearts to Jesus, when they surrender their being to Jesus. Jesus said those people in the end time, their love for me will grow cold. It means their prayer life goes cold. Their, uh, their, their, their Bible reading life grows cold. Their love for the house grows cold. Their love for spiritual thing grows cold. Hear this, when your love for God grows cold, your spiritual ears becomes dull. You don't hear the warning, or when you do hear the warning, you have the attitude of, hmm, doesn't matter. You see how dangerous that is. And we've certainly seen a lot of that in our uh, society uh, today. So let me just recapture before we begin. There is a difference between the rapture and the second coming. Sometimes Christians get these two things uh, mixed up or confused. <clears throat> so the rapture is Jesus, is us meeting Jesus, the church meeting Jesus or the bride meeting Jesus in the air. The second coming is Jesus returning with his church to establish his kingdom on earth for, for a thousand years. The rapture uh, is secret and instant. It would happen bang, boom, psh, just like that. As for the second coming will be visible, every eyes will see him in the second coming. Uh, the rapture could happen at any minute. It could happen in any minute. The second coming will take place seven years uh, later after the rapture. Now, as I said last week, the word rapture is not in the Bible. The word rapture is not in the Bible, but the doctrine of the rapture is in the Bible. You will find words like caught up, snatched up, or taken up. Those words are in the Bible. So Paul the Apostle, <clears throat> writing uh, Thessalonians, remember as I said last week, uh, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, they were the ones who established the church in Thessalonians. So Paul is writing to respond to some of the issues that the church was facing at the time, including the issue of not knowing what happens to those who have uh, died. So we'll find that in verse 13 to 15. Pastor Dale, could you please read uh, this? Uh, from uh, 18, uh, 16 to 18. <clears throat> 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be the Lord forever, with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So when the trumpet of the Lord sounds, several things happen when the trumpet of the Lord sounds. The Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first. Now, as I said last week, the moment a Christian dies is the moment your spirit goes to heaven. Your body goes to the grave. So the question is, so if your spirit is in heaven, and the bodies in the grave, who in the world are the ones that are rising up first when the trumpet of the Lord sounds? That is a brilliant question. I need some volunteers. Uh, can you guys uh, come in? Norman and Rachel, come up here, guys. <laughs> Thank you for volunteering, guys. An amazing uh, 
Okay, yeah, it comes, so Rachel here and Norman here, please. Rachel represents your spirit. You have a spirit, yes, living inside your body. The only reason why you are breathing today, because there is a spirit living inside. That is the real you. And you also have a body. Uh, yeah, you also have a body. Paul tells us in Corinthians to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The word absent there is the Greek word that means to go abroad, to immigrate. So the moment you die is the moment your spirit goes and be with Jesus forever. Now remember this, <clears throat> when God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says that God breathed into man the breath of life. Where did God create Adam's body from? Dust from the earth. Did his perfect body come from heaven? No. God created this perfect body from the earth. This body was perfect in every way. No sickness, no disease, no headache, no pain. It was a, hear this, it was a spiritual, perfect body. And you will understand what I mean by spiritual in a minute. It was created by a perfect God, perfect in every way. But there was a problem. Even though this perfect body that God created from the earth, there was no life in the body. It was life less yes it was like there was nothing the body was perfect but it was lifeless and the bible tells us that god breathed into adam the breath of life and bible scholars believe it was god come on spirit in, hey, hey, hey 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 cut that out you two okay yeah can you stand in front of him please it was god putting the spirit inside the body then the Bible says that man became a living being. You see the word spirit there is the Hebrew word that means wind, breath, air, spirit. So God put the spirit inside this perfect spiritual body that was lifeless. Then the body came to life. Does that make sense? Okay, thanks guys. Now I need you to understand uh, that. So when it comes to the question about the resurrection of the dead, Paul puts it beautifully. So he uses the analogy of us planting a seed to explain that. Thanks, Dale. 1 Corinthians 15, 35 to 44. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just to see. So Paul says there, uh, you don't plant the fruit, you plant the seed, yeah? You don't plant the fruit, you plant the seed. Sorry. Perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it, to, gives it a body as he has determined. And to each kind of seed, he gives its own So body. Paul is saying, you plant the seed, but God is the one that gives the body to that seed. Come on, church, work with me. God is the one that gives the body to that seed. So you plant the seed, God puts the body to that seed. Then he says this in answering that question. <laughs> So will it be with the resurrection of the dead? The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual, a spiritual body. body. So Paul says that when you die, your body goes to the grave. This broken body that is perishable, dishonor, weakness, a natural body. So that is sown or planted, that goes into the grave. What God does, He raises that body up with the trumpet of the Lord's sound. He supernaturally 
raises that body up in a powerful way. And the Bible says that body will rise as imperishable. The word imperishable means eternal, everlasting, never ending, permanent. So the body is imperishable. But he also says that broken body that was buried in brokenness, Paul says it will be raised as a glorified body. Body in power. And notice he says, and a spiritual body. Question, where did the spiritual body come from? The grave, yeah? God raised that spiritual body up from the grave. Remember Adam. God put the spirit inside Adam's body. Then man became a living soul. Hear the saints. The saints who have gone before us. The saints whose spirit are in heaven. They're enjoying the presence of God. But they are waiting for their glorified body. They're waiting for the glorified body that it is imperishable. Hear this. You do, the Spirit does not rest here in the grave. That is not scriptural. The moment you die, your spirit goes to heaven. So those people are enjoying the presence of God. But they're waiting for the glorified body uh, that will live forever. A glorified body that will not experience sickness. That will never end. A glorified body that lives forever forever and God's people say when does that take place when the rapture takes place that's when that begins to take place our mind can't understand that why because God is God he knows exactly what he's doing exactly how he put Adam's spirit inside this body it's exactly how God will uh, do this when the trumpet of the Lord sound a glorified body I'm looking forward to that because I can assure you this body is broken. And uh, for those of us who are 50 years and over, see, young people won't understand this. Only those of us, that it's a struggle sometimes to tie your shoelace. Older people, amen. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you've had to breathe in it. But I'm looking forward to a perfect body. You know, <laughs> not a problem, he says. <laughs> you know, I, I often uh, try and do a loop around our, our, our street, uh, uh, around the, that, that whole area that goes past Blackhall, uh, Blackhall Terrace, uh, Burnside, yes. So, so, uh, I did it. And my fastest time was 49 minutes. And then I thought, great. So two days later, I'm going to try and beat this 49 minutes. I did it. And it was 52 minutes. Oh, goodness me, this is not getting any. Yeah. So uh, a few days later, I did it. But tell you what, it almost killed me. But I did it. It was, uh, I think it was 46 minutes. So thank you. So I can't wait to get this glorified body uh, after that. And I know some of you are saying, yeah, we can't wait for it either. I understand that. But hey, it will take place. So after the dead is raised, Paul says this after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the cloud so those who are alive at the time when the trumpet of the lord sounds your body will supernaturally change and paul puts it whoops and paul puts it this way paul puts it beautifully this way behold i tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will rise incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put on in corruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So those who are alive, when the rapture, when the trumpet of the Lord sounds, so uh, as you're walking down the street or doing your shopping, uh, when the trumpet of the Lord sounds, your body will suddenly change because it is impossible for this earthly body to go into the presence of God. So God will supernaturally change this body into a body that is incorrupt, yeah? We don't understand that, but it will happen 
supernaturally will happen so fast the Bible says in the twinkling of an eye so you will suddenly change as you're caught up and be with the Lord in the air it's a supernatural transformation that we don't know what happen so fast bang and boom you'll be on your way uh, to meet Jesus in heaven it just supernaturally takes place now hear this <laughs> talk about sound effects <laughs> hear this you you could be walking down the street and suddenly things change now hear this there comes a time soon and very soon the headlines on earth would be something along this line. Millions and millions of people have disappeared. There will come a time where the headline will say millions of people have vanished. Just like that. We don't know where, we don't know where they've gone to, they have just vanished. Just like that. Common stories like, you know, I was just having lunch with Bob and suddenly he just vanished before my eyes. Or I was walking or I was working when so-and-so suddenly vanished. You know, the Bible says this, two people working in the field. One will be taken, one will be left behind. Question, why did God leave that person behind? Answer, because they weren't serious about walking with God. Christians who are left behind should not be surprised you're left behind. You see, we can fool people by our appearance. We can fool people by our Bible knowledge, but you can't fool God. We walk the talk. The Bible says two will be asleep. One will be taken, one will be left behind. You see, the rapture will separate the real deal from the wannabes. The rapture will separate those who walk with Jesus, who surrender to Jesus, and those who love the world and love Jesus. Hear this, Christians who walk with one foot in the world and one foot with God. Hey, listen, got news for you. You're not going. We must be prepared when the rapture takes place and God's people say, and God's people say, this is why it's important, this is a warning for all of us so those who are left behind will face tremendous persecution the world will be wondering what in the world is happening where did those people disappear to where are they now the only ones that will know exactly what's happening are the Christians who are left behind because you know our tears will start falling and not only that, the regrets will start falling. Now, God by His grace, God by His grace, who's a loving God, you still have a second chance because you know you will now go through tremendous persecution that you've never experienced before. Yeah? The Bible talks about tribulation. Talks about tribulation. You know that you need to reject the mark of the beast. Uh, you've got to reject the mark of the beast and handle persecution. This is why it's important that we take the first flight. This is why it's important that you and I be ready in season and out of season. So you don't have to experience that, you know. So you must be ready because the only choice that you have is to endure persecution if you're left behind until they cut off your head. That's the only option now does that sound scary you think that's hey listen this is why we need to go on the first flight my prayer for all of our people this is why i name you continuously before god because i have this picture uh, uh and i'm hoping the lord would allow it so i'll be standing at the gate with the lord and marking our people off because i want to see yes 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 want it that I know that's just my thinking, you know, uh, but in heaven, so on earth, there will be tremendous persecution, but in heaven, there will be a celebration. And the Bible says that you, we meet Jesus face to face. And as I said, what, what, 
what would you say to him? What could you say to the Lord? Heaven is prepared for the bride. And now it is the arrival of the bride. Seeing Jesus face to face. How awesome and powerful that is. To be able to look at the one that you've been praying unto. Looking at the one that you've read about. See, when you see Jesus, you'll be looking at the Bible himself. We won't need our Bible in heaven because looking at him, he is the Bible himself. And then the Bible says this, and so we will be with the Lord forever in heaven. There's a celebration that takes place in heaven. And it says that we will be with the Lord forever forever now hear this you notice when uh, our kids were young as a parent you know you're walking and they hold on to you know they, they hang on to your feet and you're trying to drag them uh, uh, along you know kids they just want to be with you wherever you go and that sort of thing now here's the thing what it means by us being with Jesus or being with the Lord forever and ever is this there would be a deep longing in all of us, all of us, to be with Him constantly. And there's a longing in Him to be with us. There is a joy unlike us here on earth. You know how you get along with people and then sometimes you know, I think you would say, hey, good meeting you. Uh, I wish they would go now. But there would be a longing to be with the Lord, a longing in our hearts to be with the Lord forever because we're talking about joy, peace, things that it, it, it flows from deep within. Yeah, longing to be with Him and the good thing about it, He longs to be with us. And Paul says that we will be with Him forever. Then he concludes that by saying, therefore, encourage one another with these words words we are certainly living in the end times there is no doubt about that the persecutions we face uh, I know in other countries our brothers and sisters have been butchered being murdered for their faith our life on earth is very uh, very short in comparison to eternity for us here the question is where will you spend eternity when the trumpet of the Lord sounds where do you think you will be? You know, can you imagine the face of God when the bride comes home, the arrival of the bride, and hear Him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Here's something that is going to blow your mind. God has the ability, He has the ability, the power to meet and greet everyone collectively, yet individually. How does that work? Simple. He's God and we're not. He understands and knows everything. It's just like how if every single person on the planet, if we all prayed at the same time, all prayed at the same time, God has the ability to hear every single prayer all at the same time. How does that work? Simple, He's God and we are not. He understands and knows all things. So this has been a reminder for all of us. Be prepared, fasten your seatbelt, and get ready. The trumpet could sound at any minute.